Hi, welcome to Ray Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, we are going to be looking at two graphic novels. They're both mysteries. Um, the first one will be Blessed Be by Rick Altergott. And the second one will be Hobtown Mystery Stories, The Case of the Missing Men. That's a heck of a title, right? So join me, won't you? Okay, so here's the first of our two mystery books. Um, this one is Blessed Be, a Flower Town USA Adventure by Rick Altergott. Um, and it stars, kind of, it's an ensemble book, but it kind of stars Doofus and Henry Hotchkiss. And these are pretty much Rick's most famous uh, characters. Um, Doofus had been in a lot of uh, anthologies, comic anthologies in the 80s and 90s, and he, and he had his own book for a while, his own comic. And, uh, you know, the basic joke of it is, is how big a pervert <laughs> could this guy be without actually being harmful to anyone? Um, and uh, his friend Henry Hotchkiss is an absolute moron, He's also perverted, but, you know, his main characteristic is he's dumb as a doornail. And um, these guys, <laughs> uh, this particular story about these guys started in a, a book that Fantagraphics was putting out, This uh, a comic called Raisin Pie. Half of it was um, Rick doing his doofus stories. And the other half of the comic was his wife, Ariel Bordeaux, um, doing a, her own book about uh, having to do with libraries, which and it's, it's actually a pretty good little story there. But she finished her story off. And the story that, that Rick had started um, didn't get finished. This, this comic was back, the, the Raisin Pie was back in 2002, I think it ran till like 2006 or something. Um, and then now we've had to wait all the way to 2024 to find out uh, the rest of the story. And um, this is um, billed as a mystery, they call it a mystery, but it's one where we, um, the, the people watching the comic, are seeing it from all these different viewpoints. So there's a lot of stuff we know who did what but the other characters don't. So the question is, when are they going to discover what each other, you know, what's going on? When are they going to put the pieces together? Um, and, uh, you know, we've got we've got our cast of characters here. Here's, you know, there's like the guy who runs the disgusting fast food place here. This is the judge. This is a judge who sentences this guy, um, Tommy, to uh, jail for a year. And that's what starts this whole thing rolling, is uh, Tommy is a drug dealer uh, who also takes uh, acid and uh, worships Satan. And so he gets sentenced to, to jail for a year by the judge, and when he gets out, that's when this main story takes place. Um, and here's the person, Astrid is this young woman here. She is actually the person who has the most time in the book. We follow the most. This is her boyfriend, Scotty. And um, this, here's a map of the town, just like, uh, you know, some of those other mysteries have. Um, so you see here, Rick's art is fantastic. You can kind of see why it took him so long to do this. Um, this is uh, Tommy being sentenced by the judge to prison and him swearing revenge. And look, he's even got his satanic T-shirt on just so we know that this is when it cuts to a year later. And here's Scotty, and Astrid is taking him around town and pointing out some of the places, including the 40 Acre Club. Now the 40 Acre Club, she doesn't know why it's called that, but, but we do, and it's, uh, the idea is that there's 20 guys who um, are not getting laid, and they, so they have blue balls. So you got two balls, that's 40 acres, right? And, um, Henry Hotchkiss 
is um, uh, Doofus is trying to get Henry Hotchkiss into the club with him. And so he's putting him up there for the, for the club to vote on about whether to bring him in. And uh, here's the, the club and the weirdos that are in it. So they, we don't find out if Henry Hotchkiss gets in the club, but they're feeling pretty good about it. They go back to the house. Henry Hotchkiss does, does something stupid, and Doofus loses his temper over it. And Doofus, um, you know, Henry Hotchkiss is the one person Doofus can really crap on and get away with it. So he kind of overreacts, kicks Henry Hotchkiss out of the house. Henry Hotchkiss goes running away and gets uh, trips, falls down in the woods, passes out. And now that, until the end of the book, our two heroes don't have any, any scenes together again. That's it. So I didn't know that when I read the first few chapters, I didn't realize it was going to be so long between when they, when this happens and when they get together. So, um, Henry Hotchkiss comes across a bunch of kids out in the woods having a drug fuel party. There's an abandoned van that's been sitting out in the woods and the, these young women drag off Henry Hotchkiss and then they have a sex scene, which I can't show you because it is very graphic. It's another nod to, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the underground comics. So now Henry Hotchkiss can't go home because he's betrayed Doofus by losing his virginity. Oop, nope, no, nope, nope. we're, we're, we're going to show that. So now because he's hanging out in the woods, the drug dealers hang out in the woods. So he's bumping into them. Everyone's bumping into each other. Now here's another sex scene. <laughs> and, um, the Satanist is planning to, to take back, uh, there's some guys who have kind of usurped his uh, place in the drug chain while he was in jail for a year, and he's plotting to take them out of the picture and also to get uh, revenge on the judge. Um, and then uh, even when you're not, like, there's nude fishermen who work the beach here at the, uh, the town, why do they do it in the nude? Why are they out like that? It's just because it's weird. So why not? Um, now here's uh, a chick track that has Blessed B is the title. So that's kind of where it comes from. Now, I'm a little disappointed that uh, we don't get to see what's in that chick track. But, oh well. And here's the one of the drug-fueled Satanist gatherings. Um, oh, I won't give that. That's too close to the end. Let me just, uh, I'm just going to wrap this up by saying I think the artwork's terrific. There's sex. There's violence. Um, there is a lot of stuff. There is actually a um, reverend in this book um, that Astrid knows too, and she's going to work part-time for him as a, like a, a church secretary. And... Um, he is not the butt of any jokes. Nothing, he doesn't turn out to be a weirdo or anything. And uh, he's played really straight, which is kind of weird. It feels really out of place here because everybody else does something screwed up and crazy. And you think uh, maybe the, the Reverend is going to turn out to be weird, but, but he's not. Um, so anyway, uh, as you can see, this is some great artwork. He does great character work. Every once in a while, there's some there's um, uh, some weird proportions, like the way these these you know the way the arms are foresh foreshortened look a little wonky. But um, uh, I like this artwork a lot. It's very th there's a lot of thought put into it. There's a lot of work here. I enjoyed the heck out of this book. Like I said, I. I don't think, um, it, it's funny, but there's not a lot, there's, it's not as funny as you might think it's going to be. The, the mystery part of it's played pretty straight, kind of noir-like. It's more like there's weird stuff happening in the background, and our two main characters 
are gross and weird. Um, and there's a lot of uh, funky violence and stuff. So that's that one. Blessed be. Now let's, uh, let's pop over to the other book. Okay, so this is the second book in our little review of uh, mystery comics. Um, this one is Hobtown Mystery Stories, number one, The Case of the Missing Men. And uh, the, um, it's uh, by Chris Burton and Alexander Forbes and uh, Jason Fisher uh, does the color. Um, so this is the, there's two books in this, so far in this series. Uh, this is actually a reprinting. The, the original was almost really small press and, um, Oni Press is now reissuing. They've reissued this one. I don't know if they plan yet on doing the second volume. Um, just in case I went ahead and ordered, I enjoyed this so much. I ordered a, uh, used copy of the second one. And um, as you can see, this is kind of like a takeoff on things like uh, the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. It's about four friends in a small town and they usually solve mysteries like finding lost pets or discovering who stole a bike or things like that. Um, and uh, this story, however, starts off with a man being abducted. Now, it turns out that the man is the father of one of their classmates. And the, they uh, reluctantly, the group starts helping. The whole group isn't into this, but uh, some of them are. And so they reluctantly start helping this young man look for his father. And all the adults are telling them, don't stick your nose into this. Stick with finding lost pets. So this little town has some dark secrets. And these kids start, you know, getting messed up with it. Uh, now, here's, there's some people that, that uh, go around committing crimes and abducting people. And they have these, that for masks, they have paper plates with little dog faces drawn on them. And they're usually wearing these yellow slickers. So, <laughs> you can see once again... Some good art, some fun art here. Kind of fits the tone. This is the uh, this is the map for this city, <laughs> and uh, I, I I really enjoy this art. Um, not totally realistic, but uh, quite good. There's the the dog mass for the abduction, the case of the missing men, and uh, I'm not going to go into this one a lot. Let's just say. Now, there's a lot of uh, mood setting with these wonderful drawings of this town. And uh, this is where the colorist really shines. Um, and this is, uh, this is, Blue Velvet is kind of like a Hardy's Boy mystery with a massive lump of perversion in it. This is very much like Twin Peaks. Um, you know, it has a very David Lynch kind of feel to it, to the small town. Um, the characters have their own stilted little way of talking to each other. There's weird dialogue. There's characters who seem to be weird just for the sake of being weird. You know, this guy's pulling out his fingernails in front of these kids. Why? Who knows? Um... Uh, the adults are also weird. You can't tell who's involved in the conspiracy and the cover-up. The cops sure don't seem very helpful. And, or, and, you know, everybody's parents seems to be, even the ones who uh, seem very supportive, might not really be. See these weird adults... So, there is, there's a lot of verbiage in this. There is a lot of talking, um, you know, and is the mystery uh, 
really that involving. I, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm, I'm ordering the other one. I want to read some more of it. Um, they do a great job of hitting some of the kind of points you see in movies or books with these kind of kid mysteries. And uh, like I said, it's got that David Lynch style twistedness to it with weird characters doing weird things. The kids not being really very rebellious, but considered rebellious by everyone. And then there's some surreal craziness that happens at various points. I mean, this snake with arms that attacks this guy. Begs for uh, anti-venom. A caretaker who's really no no good for the, the person she's taking care of. And here we got one of our characters discovers a murdered lunch lady. Anyway, I think you get the point here. A um, lot more talking than probably some people are going to like. I think it's handled well. I like the art a lot. Um, and there's some real weird stuff. I mean, I'm not going to give away, as it gets towards the end, the weirder the stuff and the more often it happens. So that's the uh, Hobtown Mystery, The Case of the Missing Men.